back in 2016, I had this very strong wooing or this kind of premonition that 2017 for me was going to be a, a major crossroad. Um, I didn't quite understand uh, what was about to happen. I was going to, I was going to turn 70 January the 28th of 2017. Anyways, um, looking back in retrospect over the course of seven years of my life, re repentance has always been a, a new encounter for me. Mm -hmm. On a very seasonal basis, depending where I was, I was orphaned at the age of six, seven. Mom just literally got up and left. Uh, and Dad tried to deal with, with the absence of my mother. And there I am, my sister and I. So Dad resorted to sending my sister and I to a place of friends that they knew mm -hmm. from the old country. And those people were, turned out to be very abusive. Mm -hmm. And I found that in the first, I guess, 12, 15 years of my life, there was this, there was this animosity, there was these questions about mm -hmm. What is life really about? And mm. why am I going through all this crap? Because mm. it seemed that from what I heard in conversation was that George, your parents left you, your mother left you because you were a bad boy. Mm. And at sure. that age, you know, you inculcate that kind of mentality Mm. And it really sets itself in the base of your soul. Mm. So I learned very early in my life that the only time I got any acceptance or any recognition was through performance. Mm. And Roger, you and I talked about that very briefly. And I found that in that time, it worked for me. Mm. I became uh, very successful at at school, at studies, at academia, in sports. But I found that as I got into the 20s, I got involved with a uh, very legalistic church. Originally, I came out of a Catholic background, in tradition only, because there was a lot of hypocrisy there. And I found that stepping into this one particular church, and I was, I guess, like 21 or 22, somewhere around there, um, and I don't know what drew me into this particular church, but it was very legalistic. It was Old Covenant, Old Testament. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe, Andre, you may remember this church, Worldwide Church of God. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I was in that church for about 12 years, and it was all, it was all law. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was all discipline. Mm -hmm. It was all study. It was all scripture. Yeah. And I got so caught up in that, I became very systematic. I started to create what Roger and you and I were talking about, very analytical. I tried to structure the Ten Commandments and draw all various scriptures to support each commandment because I sensed if I could just get those Ten Commandments <laughs> down pat, I would be able to find God somehow. <laughs> so anyways, I mean, I was in that for, sure. like I said, 12, 15 years. Coming out of that um, was somewhat paradoxical because I remember these two pastors or ministers coming around my home because I, I missed a couple of Sabbaths. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we, we used to worship from Friday night to Saturday, which is part of the Old Covenant. I think that church was probably more pharisaical than, than the Pharisees themselves at the other time. <laughs> and anyways, when they came in and they said, well, you know, George, you've been missing uh, service a few weeks, so I think what we'll do is we'll ask you to stay away. And I thought, well, that's, that's what I've been doing. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, the humor in that is that when they finally decided to leave, and I kind of walked out with them to the porch, and they said their goodbye, I felt this tremendous freedom that just sort of <laughs> settled down on me. And I thought, this is, this is crazy. Why do I feel so good? <laughs> so my, my, my life sort of took a turn around that time. And I went sort of my own way. I got involved in business. Um, I became quite successful, actually. 
uh, very performance-based, uh, goal-oriented, uh, setting bench work terms and uh, all kinds of stuff. And I found that that eventually started to become very exhausting also. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember just saying one day, you know, there's got to be more meaning to life than, th than just this. Mm -hmm. And I had this amazing encounter one morning where I went to the washroom, I think it was around four o'clock in the morning, and I got up and went back into bed and tried to get back into bed, and I hear, taste and see that the Lord is good. Mm -hmm. So I jumped under the covers, and I'm just, <laughs> I'm just planning to go to sleep. <laughs> While this, this taste and see that the Lord is good, it kept repeating itself and reverberating, and I couldn't fall asleep, and I got so stirred up. The very next morning, I, I looked up that scripture. It was in Psalm 34, verse 8. Mm -hmm. Well, in the meantime, I hadn't been attending any church and uh, I was asked uh, through a 12-step program that was happening at a Pentecostal church, because um, I really only had that conversation about joining the 12-step program, but this pastor asked me or invited me to come into this particular denomination on that particular Sunday. So that taste and see that the Lord is good, it stayed with me through that entire week. So I decided to go to that church and I walked in there and it was nice music and it was a very relaxing atmosphere. I took a seat, maybe the third or fourth row from the front. Uh, the music ceased and the senior pastor comes out. And this is a pretty large denomination in Streetsville. At that time it was called MGT, Mississauga Gospel mm -hmm. Temple. It, it has, apparently it's, it's changed its name. But the senior pastor comes out and he looks over his congregation and it seemed that he was just focused on me. <laughs> and I'm sitting there looking at him, he, he's kind of doing this, and then he looks down at me. Never met this guy before. And the very first thing that comes out of his mouth wow. is, taste, taste and, and see that the Lord is good. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, prior to that couple of weeks, I was driving around Mississauga looking for a church. Um, and my prayer was, um, Lord, you lead me to the to the church this time. So I took that I took that as a sign. So I was involved in that church for four years, and they were um, very revealing. There was things that I learned about the Holy Spirit that I didn't know about. But I found that after four or five years, um, I was asked very nicely to join a seminary under the Pentecostal umbrella. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, these, the senior pastor and the associate pastor, um, they actually left MGT because they had some other grand ideas. But anyway, so I got talked to the seminary. Uh, my first three, four months in the seminary did not work very well because my sister, my younger sister, was diagnosed with uh, pancreatic cancer. At that time, I was a, a pretty religious guy. Uh, I knew my scriptures. Um, I always had an answer. If I didn't, I would reach to my back pocket and pull out a three by five card that would give me a specific scripture for, for a, a, an answer to, <laughs> to a question. So anyways, um, when my sister passed away, I went into a, a year, a year and a half, a pretty dark time and uh, kind of walked away from everything. Anyways, where am I going with this? Um, <laughs> Andre, you're talking about chaos and how it seems that God comes into those moments of chaos in our lives. And, you know, I have encountered that quite a few times mm -hmm. in my own personal life. Mm -hmm. And it seems that every time God steps in, and he stepped in in different ways, mm -hmm. and I truly experienced a genuine healing, mm. something that took place within me, mm. and I won't be specific about what the issue was, but that's how I found God working in my life. Mm. Relationship has always been a major problem for me, mm. and I started to discover that God is a relational God, mm. mm -hmm. and that relationship between the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, mm. and how we're included in that, things started mm. to really, really change for mm. me. Mm -hmm. I'm going to jump ahead 
a few years. But that was the course that I was on. God was always involved mm. when I was sort of flatlined. Yes. Yeah. Um, recently, as I mentioned earlier, before, uh, before I got into all the, the, the different details, 27 rolls around. On the first day of the year of 2017, I had what they call a transient stroke. This transient stroke put me uh, into a state of mind where I couldn't speak. I was very silent. It was very uh, frightful. Uh, and I always, if you knew my background, I always thought I had an answer for everything. <laughs> and at this particular time, <laughs> I had no answers. There was the silence, and even there in the hospital, um, they designated me into a room, and I'm trying to still figure this out. Mm. I had an encounter at 2.30 in the morning where someone comes into my room, and they, have a, they address themselves as a doctor. Um, she looked Jewish, very petite, must have been about five foot six, somewhere around there. Um, she kind of touched my feet and my hands and kind of looked at me and left the room. I, I guess maybe five, ten seconds later, the same lady comes in. She looks at me and she says, if you go into cardiac arrest, now I'm not sure the medical terms, but if you go into some kind of an arrest or if you're cardiac arrest or whatever, do you, do you want to be revived? So I'm looking at her, <laughs> and if you knew where I was at that time, mentally and physically and emotionally, when, when she presented that picture to me, I kind of looked at her and I go, no, I don't want to be revived. Mm. What I was basically projecting or trying to say was that I don't want to come back into this stuff mm -hmm. again because mm -hmm. I've had enough of it. Because mm -hmm. I was at a, at a point in my life where things were getting pretty crazy. And I nodded no. Well, the strangest thing is she's looking at me and she smiles. She smiles at me. She pats me on the hand, turns around, and walks out. <laughs> Hmm. So, I think about two hours, three hours later, I got my speech back. And I said to my wife, Beth, Beth, I had this doctor come in, visited me, <laughs> asked me this question, and I nodded no. Um, and that was kind of it. Well, my wife says, well, we don't, they don't have a doctor, female doctor, in the hmm. stroke unit. This hmm. is in Guelph, Ontario. Hmm. So I thought, well, I'm sure, I, I know what I saw, and I know. So anyways, um, what am I trying to say here? I recognize that God comes into our lives sometimes because we, each one of us here, have a very unique story. Mm -hmm. We really do. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing how God has this wonderful intimacy and understanding of where I am where, and where everybody is. Yes. The very unique thing that I heard today, and there's so much I have heard, Audrey, mm. thank you very much. Um, we talked about vulnerability. When my wife picked me up three days or three nights later, I said to Beth, I said, you know, something has really happened here to me. I can't explain it. I don't know how to put words to this. But I felt like I've died. <laughs> but not died because I'm here. <laughs> and there was this, well, I guess the rebirthing. My wife says, well, you, you, you've experienced another rebirth. Mm. I said, well, that's a good word. And the other thing I, I sensed was I was extremely vulnerable. Mm. I felt this vulnerability. And it's not like I'm talking about weakness. Mm -hmm. it's, it's this sensitivity mm -hmm. to people around me and there was this amazing kind of compassion towards people 
that I never even met strangers. Yeah. yeah. And uh, sure. anyways, we got in the car. She drove. She drove me home. A week or two, a weeks later, something very amazing happened. Um, there was there, there there was a real transformation that took place in my own in my life. Um, I've always had an issue with abandonment, rejection because um, parents weren't there, mm. and um, I guess I generalized that. Anyways. Um, I was sitting by the lake, we have a lake not too far from our place, and I was very quiet uh, for about a week, and this is really strange for me to be quiet because usually when I'm walking <laughs> or sitting, I'm, I'm either praying or having a conversation. Yeah. This particular day, something was very different. I started to notice things that I've never noticed before. The, the snowflakes were almost to the point where I could see the individual snowflakes. The sky was beautifully blue, the clouds were white, white. <laughs> I had this amazing noise uh, take place behind me. Um, someone here said something about the wind and how God works and how he comes and how he kind of leaves. And I had a very phenomenal experience um, along that line and it was very noticeable. It's almost a little scary because I wasn't quite sure if I was really hearing what I was hearing, but mm -hmm. I, I kind of let that noise kind of build up, build up, build up to a Sunday, and then it just kind of dissipated. And I got enough nerve to turn around and look, and all I saw was the top of the pine tree just go, and things like the wind just left. I thought, oh, that's really, really weird. Uh, walked home, got into the kitchen, uh, making a salmon sandwich. My wife wasn't home, but she was over with a friend. I thought that maybe I'll make a little bit of pasta because the salmon sandwich wasn't going to be enough. And then I hear, loneliness has left. Wow. Oh. Well, I stood there. Wow. <laughs> 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 I, I know, I know. God. <laughs> <laughs> I just have hay fever. <laughs> I'm not, you know, I mean, it's, it's amazing what's, what, what, what took place. Wow. So, the amazing thing is, I never really associated uh, a lot of things in my own mm. personal life with, with loneliness. Mm. But the loneliness was basically the root and core of mm. all my issues yeah. and all my relation, wow. problems with relationship. And the amazing mm. thing is that not too long after that, I saw things differently. Mm -hmm. I felt things differently. Um, and, you know, trying to articulate this, sometimes words just don't cut it mm -hmm. because it, it, it's so experiential yeah. and it's so personal yeah. that how do, you, how do you convey that? And then you've got to be careful who you tell them. They might think you've been joining their drinking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, wow. Holy Spirit. Thank you. Yes. So wow, I, I'm wow, just trying wow. to encapsulate that because what, you, what you're speaking about yeah. and how God, um, His being is revealed yeah. in our humanity and our, our humanity is coming into the fullness of Christ's humanity. Sure. It's absolutely amazing. Well. Absolutely amazing. You have so enriched us all with your story. Thank you for sharing. Thank you so that was much. amazing.